Morgan Spector, welcome back to An Actor Despairs. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. It's a pleasure to be here. It's so great Congrats to have on you all back. the uh Yeah, thank you. No, oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I mean, you uh you were one of the first that got me started and we were just chatting off air, you know, after you had, had Carla Gugino and then two days later the world shut down. So it's just been, mm-hmm. you know, it's crazy seeing you right now because the last time I saw your face in person, you know, it was like I don't think either of us could have imagined the turn the world was about to take. And not even a little bit. Yeah. And, and, we're, and we're still kind of in it a little bit. And then, you know, with today, everything going on in Ukraine, it's just like, it's, it's crazy times, man. But, but how are you? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It is, it is crazy times. God, it's weird. It's, it's a weird bookend, man. It's a weird, it's weird to have spoken last time just before COVID and now be speaking. Yeah. On this, on this precipice of war. Yeah. Brutal day. I mean, not even precipice. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked actually. I didn't, I did not think it was going to go this way. I did not think so either, man. You know, and I had friends on both sides and they were like, it's not going to go this way. And no, right. uh, yeah, yeah. And, and it just seems so pointless. Like, why is this happening? Yeah. yeah, anyway. it, it, I can't think of a better definition or util, u, use of the term futile. You know, this is just yeah. blood for blood's sake, man. But uh, yeah, but on a brighter side, you know, man, <laughs> the work in the Gilded Age is incredible, man. And, and oh, it's funny. You. You, you and a, a few other, you know, friends have done the show twice, but Glenn Fleshler has done it. And, you know, you and Glenn have something in common that I don't know if it's, you know, Glenn told me it's all an accident, but like you guys end up being company actors for HBO. You guys are like in every HBO great show of all time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, not not everyone, because yeah. But, but yeah, no, I know. I, I mean, I, I feel it is such a uh, yeah, to have done to have to have worked there and to feel like they trust me and they'll put me in, you know, put me in projects that they care about. Uh, I mean, I, you know, it's, I, it means a lot to me, you know, they've made some of my all time, I, some of my all time favorite shows, you know, and they, they, totally. they seem, they seem to, you know, it seems to be a place where what, you know, their development process is really hard and it's really stringent and the stuff that emerges from it tends to be of, you know, real quality. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very proud to be sort of, you know, if I'm, a, if I'm an HBO stable player, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled about that. Yeah, man. And, and, and the plot of against America, I mean, David Simon, you know, as far as writers that I want to work with, it doesn't get, you know, any better than that. Not Me no, no, no disrespect to Julian. You know, he's incredible, but you know, it's just like the wire and, and what yeah. he did with that piece, you know, he's, He's just such a deep thinker. And I think we need a lot more of those right now. And I, I, I could be wrong, but I think like probably the last time I saw you, you were about to start that. Cause Crumholtz had yeah. just come through and you told me you guys were doing something. Yes. Is that right? That we were, I think we might've, we might've, maybe it was just about to air. Is that possible? It, it if could, no, I don't think it was. Cause I, I, I remember seeing breakdowns for it after you right okay yeah, oh, okay yeah, okay yeah. yeah so then i guess we were just about to i guess we were doing it or we were just about to do it yeah yeah right. so how, how how was that man because is it true that david simon was a fan and and the juice didn't work out but he called you back for this yeah right that's exact. that's exactly right i had auditioned for something for the juice and they 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 called me and um yeah it didn't work out and then they called me um out of the blue to offer me that job. And it was, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was sort of like at working on something else in LA and I was sort of at loose ends and was just kind of like, got this call. It was like, David Simon wants you to be this guy and this thing. And I was like, I don't know. It was, you so know, it was a straight off crazy moments David sometimes. Simon, man. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, rock I was and nuts. roll. Damn. Totally rock and roll. Yeah, not yeah. like, not, not the kind of thing that like happens to me a lot. You know what I mean? Like a very, a rare you, and beautiful moment. Back yeah. to proven that i wasn't you know throwing bullshit up your ass in the last one man you mean it well deserves <laughs> you know thanks and thanks. and you know i'm so curious for something that deep you know simon i think works a little bit differently than other writers and that he 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 writes everything before you guys start production so did you know what you were getting into or or not well i think that that was supposed to be the case um but uh, we started with three episodes written. I mean, he was also uh, writing the final season of The Deuce at the same time. That's um, right. Which I don't know how anybody does that. I don't know how you do yeah. to, to... Yeah, so you... He, I know he like usually likes to write episodes before, but you mm-hmm. were saying he, he had The Deuce 
And yeah, he, uh, yeah, right. So yeah, he was. I think he he had he had intended to write all six of uh, all six episodes of plot before we started shooting. Um, but because I, part, I think in part because he was also writing the last season of The Deuce at the same time, uh, we started with only three, and he was still sort of writing on the fly. Um, but it was uh, there. I mean, we it was very clear who we were, and we also had the benefit of the novel, right? I mean, we could we could go and read yeah, uh, true. the Philip Roth novel. So there was, you know, obviously there were there were different there were changes that David made, um, and there were things that um, you know there were. I think there were there were ways that I think he blended, um, you know, the Philip Roth's fictional family in the novel, and I think some a little bit of his own family. So there were you know slightly you know there were slight variations, but we, we sort of knew you know the direction we were headed. That's awesome, man! And was that a great ride? I mean, you know, yeah, it was. It, it was that was such a special job. I mean, I I loved uh, I loved you know I thought the you know I I uh, love. Philip Roth as well. So this combination of David Simon and Philip Roth uh, together was um, just like an incredibly appealing package. And I, the, the cast was great. Mickey Spiro, who directed the first three, Tommy Shlami directed the second three. It was, wow. you know, the sort of general creative team was just incredible. So it was a very, and I, there was also a sense that, that, you know, when you're adapting something that um, like that novel that feels very, um, you know, the source, the source material is excellent. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and you really, you know, you, you, you encounter it and you feel like this is a real, you know, this is an important work uh, so that there's something there's a, there are stakes to the adaptation, right? Like it's possible to, to fail the, the original, it's possible to fail the source material. And so everybody sort of was doing everything they could to not do that. I think, I think including Dave Simon. So, wow. um, and I think he really, I think he really succeeded, you know, for my money. Uh, but yeah, was, was uh, he able to be you know, There's a lot of love went into that job. While Roth, the no, he, was going on. Or, oh, uh, it's David Simon. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, not um, not always, but because um, uh, George Pelicanos um, oh, I love had, George. So much of his, had, had so much of a role in, I think, running and writing the Deuce. David was able to be with us a lot, so it was. But he was definitely back and forth. Although I think the Deuce finished like in July, and then he was with us for the rest of our shoot, which went to September. So you did have like a half of that shoot in COVID? No, that that shoot wrapped. Uh, I'm, I think I'm, that shoot wrapped. COVID shut down the world March twentieth, March yeah, March twenty twenty, right? Yeah, two years right. almost. So that yeah. was when that that was when our show was supposed to start airing. That was when plot was supposed to. Start ah, okay. Airing. So then like, you I were right. You you had already started. finished it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, then, yeah. And then, but because we shot, yeah, and we had shot from June to, uh, I think, maybe I'm, I'm getting these months slightly wrong, but like, or no, from like April to September, uh, 2019. Wow, yeah. that, that's and awesome. And then we started it started airing. It started airing, I think, April 2020, something like that. And it, you know, I'm, I'm curious. You know, obviously, we'll get there with the Gilded Age, but I mean. Do you feel it, it's just like a strange happenstance that you keep getting cast in period pieces? You know, I mean, it's. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's I mean, I guess, you know, with stuff like Boardwalk Empire plot, you know, there's like a I don't know. I mean, there's a way that I sound and a way that I look that I think yeah. makes sense for, you know, the sort of you know, mid 20th century sort of post Ellis Island, yeah. you know, New York immigrant world. Right. Um, that is sort of, you know, like where my family, what my family is, what my heritage is and stuff like that. Um, but then there's also, I guess, you know, there's, you do some of that, you do some stuff and you have to go, okay, you know, the accent's a little different and you have to, you know, maybe you carry yourself a little different or you, you know, there's, there, there's some, there's a technical dimension of, of playing period stuff that I think, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, maybe, maybe there's some element, you know, you know, I went to conservatory and we studied, you know, there's like a, there's a certain, there's a certain amount of, um, uh, maybe theater. So you pick up doing theater that maybe, you know, it's good play over to a uh, period work a little, a little, a little more readily than other stuff. Yeah, because that, that's one of the things I so greatly appreciated about both your work in this and the Gilded Age is you, you, you found a voice that was 
you know, it, it was period and it worked, but they're so different and they really echo the era that they're in quite well without, you know, and I, I, I wasn't sure if that was something that was like, you know, consciously directed at you or a conscious choice or something you just kind of figured out that worked for each character respectively. Like, I mean, right now we'll focus on, on plot, you know? Oh, uh, like the, the way that like, the- yeah, just like the style, the style of speaking, you know, I mean, you, you can, you can feel it much yeah. more in the Gilded Age, but you know what I mean? Like everything that you, it, 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 it works for that, you know, World War Two. you know, like I haven't seen something like that since maybe Band of Brothers, you know? Mm-hmm. So tell me, you know, working on that, man, and finding the voice and, and just a lot of the lessons learned from digging into a project with David Simon, you know, mm-hmm. there's not, not, not many actors that get a chance to do that, you know, because he's very choosy. And, uh, mm-hmm. and man, that's so beautiful. He believed in you. So yeah, I'm really curious what it's like, you know, particularly working in a, in a period piece with David Simon, mm-hmm. because most of his work usually isn't so much about the aristocracy, you know, he, he really, it's, it's a, like, as authentic of, of working class America as it gets. And, and I mean, there's history classes taught about his work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the first things that he told me um i had a zoom meeting with him um like months before we were going to start uh with him and our director and uh he was saying you know just the thing to remember about this guy is that he's not he's not a hero um and i think that speaks to what you're saying about him being um you know not a he, just a really ordinary man you know just a, a sort of you know he's a roth's father was a door-to-door insurance salesman he worked for metlife and you know he um he was a, a striver and a hustler and, you know, a sort of part of that um, generation of, I guess, second generation or first generation, you know, born in America, um, parent whose parents had come over and they, you know, they were going to, they were going to transcend, you know, the, the experience that their parents had had and become Americans and, you know, be, and really sort of, you know, ride that, ride that ladder of the American dream up. Um, but he, you know, he, he's asked in that, in the show to deal with really extraordinary historical circumstances and, you know, genuine danger. And it was very important to David that, you know, he not be, you know, he's a, in some ways he's a, he's a blowhard and he's a, yeah. you know, he's, he's not, he's not a perfect man in any way. And that was, I think, that was a real um it's a real relief to to feel like you can just be uh, a you know a sort of ordinary human being in all of their in all of their weakness um which is yeah. rare today not you know especially with everything that the culture is consuming with all these superhero things it's like human beings being human making mistakes and learning to be better you know or not even yeah. you know yeah and that that was the thing I loved about it, and you you were so wonderful in it, man. And and so, Thanks. you know, it's it's crazy that that got held up, delay wise by by COVID, and then came out later, right? Then planned. No, actually, that came out. You know, that came out right at the beginning of COVID, and it was it basically was and it basically disappeared. Like basically nobody. I mean, people watched it, like, yeah. but but not. Um, not the audience that I think we were hoping for. And I, you know, I think people just, I mean, I saw this, I saw people saying this sort of explicitly at the time that, you know, it was, um, you know, we were heading into this presidential election and COVID was happening and people did not want, a, I mean, that show was really nakedly political. You know what I mean? Totally. It was this, it was yeah. this real, it was, it was David Simon in some ways really like, you know, throwing, throwing down his gantlet and saying, you know, like, this is, this is where I am. This is where I, you know, this is, this is where I stand in this moment. And I, you know, people, you know, I think people who found their way to the show really got a lot out of it, but I think a lot of people just were like, you know what, I, I need Tiger King. You know what I mean? That was, that was the thing because that was the thing we came out against. And like the entire planet was watching Tiger King and like nothing against Tiger King. It was delightful, but you know, it's anyway, we, we, I I just think that was, you know, we, we were, we were, we were serving, uh, you know, we were serving, you know, steak and potatoes and people wanted, people wanted root beer or something. Yeah. You know, and it, it, that's the great thing about Simon's work is it's deep, you know, and, and I love yeah. that about him is, is he, he rightfully asks a lot of his viewers, you know, and if you, if you stay, if you stay with him on that ride, the payoff is huge. So then for you, you know, like when this whole thing shut down, you know, myself included, like there's a big question mark about whenever 
we were going to get to act or even totally. audition or do anything again, man. And, you know, how, how was that for you? You know, not getting a, at all personal. I just mean, like, was it like, I want to take a break from acting and just be with my family, you know, because like I know Glenn came on and he was he was like living upstate and a few other guests were kind of doing that. Bill Pullman was doing the same thing. You know, did you did you get a good escape or I hate asking yeah. people that they had a good pandemic because that's I think that's an oxymoron. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, were you no, able well, to find some good things out of it? I guess. Is my yeah, question. I mean, we you know, we had sort of moved when my daughter was born, she's almost four, but when we, when, when she was first, when she was born, we sort of moved, we had a place upstate and we, that we had sort of, you know, been our occasional, you know, escape place. And that became our sort of our primary residence. And uh, so we were sort of already up there. And then when COVID happened, and we, and just only occasionally coming back to the city. And then when COVID happened, we were kind of like, okay, well, there's no real reason to go back to the city. We're just going to be here. And we also had a couple of friends who, had, who were sort of staying with us long term. And so our early COVID, you know, it was it was it was very communal and very social. Yeah. And, um, you know, there was a there was a sense of like, OK, well, we're all here and we're going to make the best of it. And we're going to you know, we're going to do interesting cocktails every night and we're going to do elaborate meals. And we're going to you know, like we I mean, there was I, I directed a short film with a friend of mine. You know, like there was a uh, there, there was a lot of like. Uh, there was a lot of creativity and sort of energy yeah. at the beginning in a weird way, because yes, like you're right. I, I remember thinking, well, we're fucked. Like yeah. can't rehearse, can't go, can't go. I mean, you know, it's like at the beginning, especially, I think it just seemed, you know, this was a sp in the, or in the moment, are we supposed to be bleaching our shoes when we come back from the store? Like what is the God, level yeah. of, you know what I mean? Um, so, so it was, it's it, a set seemed like the last place you were ever going to get to be again. And so, you know, I think we, I, I took a lot of that energy and put it into other things. And, you know, early, that was like, that was actually really, you know, there was some satisfaction to be had there. That was, um, but, but eventually, yeah, it's just like, I want to go back to the world again. Yeah. And, the but yeah and the other, I mean, the other, the other thing, you know, is that after not too long, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, after a couple of months, like our industry got together and kind of, um, I, I, and I, I, I will never not find this miraculous. Like the thing yeah. that our unions and the producers did, they got together and figured out a safe way for our industry to go back to work. And then our entire industry went back to work and everybody got, you know, like I, I, I find it kind of miraculous. You know what I mean? Like totally there, there are many reasons to love labor unions, but the fact that like they were, you know, our unions were able to pull together and sort of, you know, find a way for us to be safe on set, I think is incredible. So, yeah. I mean, we were, you know, I was, especially gilded, you know, gilded. Cause I was, I was supposed to start gilded age the week that um, COVID shut down. Right. The world. Cause you, you guys didn't, didn't even get to start though. Right. You weren't no, we like, were no. And we were supposed to yeah. start production literally yeah. that week. Um, and, and that show just seemed, I mean, it's huge, right? It's three stages. It's hundreds of people. The crew is enormous. Yeah. And you're just like, this is not, you can't do that show. Like maybe you could do yeah. some little indie film or something, or, I mean, I mean, actually, it turns out the opposite is true, that the bigger things have the scale. To yeah, because there's space the infrastructure, and, yeah. <laughs> totally, uh, yeah. and the indie films are getting totally brutalized by that, like yeah. extra 20 percent COVID cost. Oh, but, uh, it's like a million dollars, you know, it's yeah. insane. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. It's nuts. And it's wow. and not I mean, some films, I think, just can't do that. But anyway, yes. Um, did plot was, get you uh, seemed, gilded? Was that what? or was that did plot get you gilded back on? I auditioned, I auditioned for, for Gilded, um, but, but plot definitely got me the audition. Like it was, Amazing. It, it, it was definitely like, okay, let's, you know, you're, you're in house already. Kind of like, let's see, let's, let's have you read for those. That's um, beautiful, man. You're so good as George Russell, man. I mean, it's such a, you. You, you know, like I, I won't lie. Usually aristocratic narratives. I don't, I don't get them, but you, you and Carrie and, and uh, also um, what's her name. I always, pronounce it wrong your daughter plays gladys uh that that taisa is that how you say it i lost you oh, oh taisa yeah is that right yes taisa formiga yeah she's incredible in the show as well man and, yeah i think she's brilliant and, and 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 it seems conveniently that you know i say conveniently in a casual sense of the term that a lot of broadway actors that were not able to do things found work in the show yeah, no, I mean, not just Broadway actors, but a lot of, um, 
you know, the, the clothes on that show are mostly built. They're mostly not pulled out of, uh, you know, of archives or anything like that. They're actually most of them. And, and they were built by uh, Broadway seamstresses and, and tailors who uh, were out of work and who otherwise would have been busy. So that are, you know, that was like a, another, another cool thing that our show was able to sort of take advantage of in that time was there were a bunch of people who have tremendous skill and were, yeah. and were actually available. Um, so, yeah. That's amazing. And, and I'm so curious, you know, because like the voice that you have and I've only recently, cause I kind of have more of a edgy working class look, I've been getting some kind of period piece auditions. The voice that you came up for with George Russell is incredible because it's, it's, it's just on, it's not too far in some of the other shows that you see in the, you know, the UK. And mm. I'm so curious how you found that perfect, like, mm. you know, where it, it's not, it's not the Morgan I'm talking to now, but like that perfect you and Carrie both actually, you know, you, you guys did such a wonderful job. Was that, you know, did you guys rehearse and play with some different kind of vocal yeah, I mean, there's a uh, first thank you because it is definitely uh, you know that is a big deal, and I think you know that you it, 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 I find it quite tricky because um, you know ordinarily like on plot when we were trying to acquire that dialect we could go back and listen to recordings of right. um, you know people from like the guy who lived on that block in that time who knew Philip Roth and went to his high school. And this is what that guy sounds like. And you can be like, okay, that's, you know, I can, I can just absorb that energy and that'll be, you know, a very, a very useful part of what I build in terms of a dialect. But this is more, um, I, it's tougher to acquire. It's tougher to find record, you know, like I don't, there aren't really recordings of the period. There are things, but they tend to be um, sort of uh, recorded like radio performances or record, yeah. you know, pieces of rhetoric that don't, it's, they don't give you a sense of natural speech. Um, and so what we're using is something that is, um, you know, it's basically general theater standard. You know what I mean? It's that kind of, um, for, you know, it's a high status sort of, but it's, it's yeah. sort of made up, you know what I mean? And so you so, okay, have to kind that's of, find yeah. a comfortable place uh, with it so that it can be, it can be alive. It can be spontaneous, but it can also give that sense of the period. And, you know, uh, we have a wonderful dialect coach, Howard Samuelson, who's on set every day. That was my next who, question. And you, he is, did work. Like, he, yeah. he is, he is listening. Um, you know, I would not say he's noting every take, but he is there so that he can, you know, if like we start to drift on something, he can make a suggestion and, I don't know. He's, I find him, he's, he's, uh, he's incredible. He's endlessly patient. Um, you know, I, I, I find it, uh, I find it really useful because I don't have to worry about it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I know that if I, if I screw it up, he's going to flag it and then I can adjust. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and one of the things, you know, that like uh, Simon nails and, and this show just gets this very similitude and I've had friends on succession and I know they have like wealth coaches and making sure mm. that everything uh, like for this show, you know, because we don't have videos back to what you were saying, you know, and, and the ways people interacted, where did you guys kind of get the information for like, you know, the parlors and the charity events and, and the things, because mm -hmm. they seem, they just seem so right. You know, it's kind of like, Oh, that, mm -hmm. that makes sense how they would do it then. You know? I mean, there are, you know, there, there are tremendous resources from that time in terms of etiquette. I mean, there were etiquette books, there were, right. You know, there were, it was incredibly prescribed how people interacted with each other. I mean, every, you know, this kind of gesture was appropriate. This kind of gesture was not. And that was all, at least in this sort of class of people, like really explicitly understood and laid out, um, you know, in ways that people could, you know, in, in books and, you know, and, and magazines and things like that. Um, and we, you know, we had access to etiquette coaching and we had, I think there is actually an etiquette coach on set. We have a wonderful uh, historian who's actually an EP on the show, Eric Dunbar. Oh, wow. um, and, um, and, and yeah, so I think, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that work is about, you know, the, is, is the research that all the, you know, that, that the production designer does, that Kasha, our costume designer did, that, um, you know, that everybody, that Michael Angler, who was sort of, you know, show running initially kind of, you know, with Julie and I, that was, and I, there's sort of like a three headed showrunner on our show. It's like, Got it. um, but you know, Michael Angler who directed the first three and the last three, um, sort of part of that too. And Sally Richardson Whitfield who directed the middle four, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a you know, all of that, you know, it's a, it's a lot of different people doing, you know, really in-depth meticulous research. Uh, and Julian too, who is, 
you know, Julian's knowledge of the sort of arcana of furniture and clothing and floral arrangements and all of that stuff for the period is really uh, nuts. I mean, he really knows he has incredibly deep knowledge about all that stuff. So we get to benefit from all of that as well. Yeah. And, and I imagine, you know, unless unless some of it's CG, I mean, I, I can imagine some maybe there was a little bit of a back lot, but like especially your residence, it seems like so much of the work is done for you because these spaces just seem so I mean, the attention to detail is, is so remarkable. I've never, yeah. I've never seen a set like that. You know, I didn't no, even I, know that. I certainly never have. Yeah. No, wa- yeah. walking onto the, walking onto those sets and you, and especially onto our back lot, because, you know, you, you don't really see back lots in New York that much. And you know, the so one you that, did build one. Wow. Oh, they, oh, the, yeah, they built. Okay. Not, a, yeah, no, you should, I mean, whatever, if you're ever out in uh, where our, our back lot is, at this yeah there's a museum out there called the museum of american armor and our back lot is there and they built okay i mean they built it out like they built the road so it's i think it's 65th street they built street, so they built the street and they built a sewer underneath it so that you know that because there's horses right and horses do nothing all day but just yeah. you know vacate their their bowels totally. um so uh that has to be able you have to be able to hose that down and the, the scale of it is really insane. I mean, there is a CG dimension when you're looking up or down the street, they're adding uh, floors, but the, up to the first story, you have the whole, the whole street. It's, it's wow. wild, man. Yeah. The, the scale of it is, the scale of it is really crazy. And especially getting to work on period pieces. You saying that is, you know, that's the no, utmost. Totally. I mean, yeah. having, having worked on, having worked on boardwalk, I mean, I worked on I, I, my season of boardwalk uh, was, was after the, the set show. was gone. Right. Yes, it was after the set yeah. was gone, but yeah. so but my my bit was mostly set in Cicero outside of Chicago, and to do Cicero, they I think they found a they found basically a a, a city block on Staten Island, and yeah. and they transformed the whole block, right? So they just took all the buildings and re and and staged them, which I thought was incredible. I mean, I still think totally. it was incredible, like to yeah. walk down that street and and see what they did was was really amazing. But yes. To think for Gilded to have that back lot built from nothing, also, and then two other stages where you have our interior sets. Plus, our I, it is, uh, yeah, the scale of it is is a little mind bending. I have to say. Wow, and then this is based on a novel as well, right? Uh, no, Gilded is. Um, I because I know it, it's a period in history, but there's a lot of books on it. There are a lot of books on it, and it pulls together. Yeah, and he's pulling together. I mean, I think, you know, the world of Edith Wharton certainly informs, Got you know, it. this, this stuff. And also, um, Robert Barron's a, what Robert Barron's right. You know, I yeah. mean, that's what, yeah. yeah. And yes, yeah. just the sort of reality of those, of those guys. And then also I think there's a book on, um, uh, Alva Vanderbilt that was really important for this one, but he's, yeah, it is really, he's, it's just sort of the, um, it, it's I think it's many it's many books it's sort of you know he's aggregated a lot of different ideas in order to in order to pull this show together that's amazing and 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 man you're so good in this role it's like you know having having met you you know we met a couple of times now and I you know you kind of get an idea of someone and it's it's just such a it's so different from you and I'm I'm just so amazed at the character work you've done I'm curious you know what came first for you was it was it was it finding the voice and then the physicality and then kind of making that match and you're defining, you know, cause like they don't, they don't fully tell you the backstory yet of, of the Russells, you know? So did you have to invent a lot of info or? Yeah. I mean, what, what I had, what I was told, you know, I think that the first thing that the first thing I started with was um, a note that my wife gave me before the audition. She was like, he's Rhett Butler. And I was like, okay, I, I kind of get that. And then I, and, and it's not, you know, it doesn't, it's not like a direct uh, translation, but I sort of, you know, in doing the, uh, in the audition, I was kind of like playing with that idea. And yeah, I mean, it just, there's a, there's an ease to him and there's, there's like a, there's a sense of play and, and pleasure in being himself that he has yeah. that I think that's sort of, there was just that, the sort of feeling of that was where I started with him and then, you know, built everything else on top of that. And also, you know, take a tremendous, took a tremendous amount of just, um, you know, what it was to play off of Carrie because, you yeah. know, Carrie is just like, you know, 
Carrie, Carrie Coon is the truth. Yeah, uh, so you can, yeah, yeah, no, she's great. Yeah. And, and you could just, and, and you, you know, I just, there was that, you know, figuring out that relationship sort of on, you know, in real time, uh, really informed that character for me too. So, but, um, but yeah, I don't know. He's fun. Yeah. And it's, it is, I, I like, you know, I like a mask. I like, I like to have a, a you know, some distance between me and the person I think it's actually really fun. And often I think you find that when you do that, then you look at the character at the end and you go, wow, this, there's so much of me in that person. In the, you know, there's, so much, there's so much of my, <laughs> yeah. you know, not me at, like on a moral sense, hopefully, but like me in terms of, um, you know, there's, there's an essence that comes through that, you, you know, you don't, that you don't, you couldn't necessarily plan for or something like that. And, and and for the for audience audience, audience list, listening, yeah, I did, but you're back now. Uh, sorry, yeah, good, good. guys, it's internet. But uh, for the audience good, listening, you know, we're, we're episode five has come out at this point, and I'm curious, what has it been like being on a show that just like from, I mean, like it seemed like by episode one or episode two, people were just so over the moon with it, and you guys got renewed really early. I mean, what did that feel like? What a what an awesome vote of confidence, man. You know. Well, I, you know, I have never been on a show that got a second season before. Um, Dude, and so, fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, it, it's thank you. It's not yeah. nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it feels, you know, to have, you know, to have the, to have your show find an audience to, to have a sense that people are, are enjoying it. You know, that people are just yeah. like, people are into it. They're following, you know, like they're emotionally engaged with the characters. They like what you're doing. I mean, you know, I, I come from the theater and you can, you know, there's, there's a, you know, when you, when you're doing a show and you're on stage and you can sort of, you can hear the house, right. You can hear, you know, are they quiet? Are they listening? Are they with you? Are they, or are they like, are they coughing? Are they digging in their backpacks, whatever. And you have a sense, you know, in a really immediate granular way from like breath to breath, are they, are they in the show with you? Are they there? And you know, with TV, you don't, you know, you, it's, you just don't get that sense in any of that same way. But, you know, be, go online now and be like, oh, shit, people are watching this thing. And oh, shit, yeah. people are like picking up what we're putting down. You know, they're enjoying the show sort of in the way that maybe the show. Oh, was that know, variety the review? Oh, my God. That was, I've yeah, never no, read it. Was, it. it was yeah. incredible. <laughs> no, there was. Yeah. And there's been some, you know, I, it's been really, you know, people have really responded um, to me and Carrie in a way that I yeah, totally did just... not predict. <laughs> and, yeah. it's, and it's fantastic. You know what I mean? It's, I was like, this is what it's totally out of nowhere, but it's fantastic. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. And, and yeah, it's like getting a second season and, 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 and being like, Oh yeah. Okay. I get to, we get to do this again. You know, like this great yeah. group of people, like you're saying all these Broadway actors. Um, you know, I really, I really, you know, I, I, I just loved doing this job. It is a very, it is very fun job to get to do on a day-to-day -day basis and so and it's in new york you know i live it's like yeah it's, you have to go to uk to do a job like this you know what i mean right, exactly. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i don't have to go to the uk and i don't have to go to australia or yeah. whatever you know i can just like you know i can i can drive drive to the city and go to work it's good that's amazing man and i'm so proud of you dude it's so well deserved Thanks, and man. i'm curious you know what, what what's up you know what do you want to do in this time you got before you got to go back to season two you know um well, I'm, we, it's, it's, it's coming right up. I mean, we actually start shooting, you know, we, we, we start shooting again early May. Oh, wow. Um, so it's not that, it's not that far away. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing a few days on um, this, uh, I think it's 20th Century for Hulu project called Boston Strangler, directed by Matt yeah, Ruskin. Yeah, with Kieran Knightley. Uh, Congratulations, right? Yeah, and that, yeah. and that Carrie's also actually in. Uh, no way. Level, we don't, we don't overlap, <laughs> I don't think. I don't think I'm actually going to see her, but yeah. Um, but yeah, which is fun, which I'm, which I'm really looking forward to. That starts, that shoots next week. Um, Dude, and good luck. Wow. Yeah. Good thanks, time. man. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yet another, yet another period. And, um, and we'll see. Oh yeah. And then the other thing, just the other thing I was going to mention, I mean, I'm actually not doing anything, but this, I, I produced this documentary on the resurgence of socialism in America, sort of in the aftermath of the Bernie Sanders campaign in 2015. And that doc is coming out on Hulu uh on march 1st so i don't know i'm just excited to have that what's be it called so actually. i can That's i can i can called, say uh, that. the big scary s word so yeah the big scary s word love that man morgan Spector. it's a let you do you're killing it dude i don't know anyone i'm so proud of you man you know thanks for coming back man and just thanks, like man. hey i'm proud of you 200 episodes like coming right up that, that yeah like, well when last know, we spoke 
Yeah. I, you know, that was, that was not necessarily guaranteed. I don't, that's, that's not nothing. You build an audience like that. That means a lot. Yeah. That means you people know, are really picking up what you're putting down. You know what I mean? It's nice. When I get my season two renewal or, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll see you on set of the gilded age, you know, fucking may, that'll be my period piece. But, uh, but thank you, man. That means yeah, a lot. Man, I to hope me. so too. How did, so Morgan, one, one final question for you, man, for, for the actors out there auditioning for period pieces, I think they really get in their head. And they think about, you know, yeah. outfit, costume, voice, you know, and I'm curious when you had your audition for George, any words of wisdom? I mean, not even saying everyone's going to go out for the for the lead, but just auditioning for a period piece and, and how you would maybe change that from auditioning for something contemporary. Um, yeah, I mean, I in terms of dress for the tape, I think. You know, I wanted to wear something that made me feel like I was looking sharp. You know what I mean? But that, but I did, I wore something that was, you know, me 20, you know, 2021 20, Morgan looking sharp, right? Not necessarily, yeah. like I wasn't reaching for, for late 19th century. I wasn't trying to look like the character. I was trying to more feel like that character so I could feel, you know, and, and, and yeah, I think it's, I don't know. I think it probably always comes down to, um, you know, the essence of that character rather than playing the period. I, I mean, I think, you know, because the period is something that you can, um, the period is, it's almost technical, right? You're going to put on the clothes, you're going to refine your dialect a little bit. Um, and then you're going to be put in this context that says, hey, it's 1882. And you're just going to be a person like you always are when you're acting. So, you know, I think it's, I, I think it's always better to, uh, to, um, you know, just like prepare, like prepare, like you would any other audition where you, you know, you find the truth of, you find the truth of what's happening for that person in the moment. That's amazing, man. And, and since we spoke about Broadway actors, any, any chance you think you'll make a, a run back to the stage soon? Oh man. I, uh, it's a great question. I would love to, um, we are really mostly upstate now and my daughter's in school. And so the sort of calculus of that has changed ah, a little yeah. bit, but, but you know what? Like I'm like, I would, it, I think if I go too long without doing a play, I, I will, some part of me will wither in a way that I don't want to allow to happen. So, you know, fingers crossed the answer is yes, hopefully, but you know, we'll see. That. All right, dude, rock and roll.